Okay, so I, I know what you're thinking. You just got an Android handheld, you've been playing it for a little bit, you have it all set up perfectly, and you're like, man, that new Android handheld looks really, really nice, and it's got OLED and all of that, but I have everything set up on this handheld. How do I, can I just copy everything over? Do I just copy paste and put it all on this and then it all works? And look, I get it, not everybody is like me. You can't speed run setting up an Android handheld in minutes. And so this video is for you. How do we get everything that's on here, or as much as possible, to another Android handheld in the least way and easiest way possible? Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey, and today we're going to completely back up an Android handheld so that we can restore it to a new one, or even just restore it to the same one. It's your choice. But you should know right off the bat that for the most part, we can get saves, we can get states, we can get certain configurations and all of that. But for the most part, a lot of the emulators need to be reset up again for mapping controls, for little settings here and there. But we can try and bring over as much as we can to another device. It's just the nature of Android. You can't go and say, I wanna copy this to this because it just doesn't exist. Either way, I'm gonna show you the manual way, how we're gonna do it going from one device to another and what's involved for each emulator. So I highly, highly suggest that you would install and use the file manager solid explorer for everything as that's what I'm gonna be using in this video. And you're also gonna likely want an SD card or some other way to copy or move the files after we're done off the device, because if you're gonna be moving it to another device, you have to get those files over. So an SD card is very easy to use. You're also likely using an SD card for the first device and you probably have it full of ROMs and all of that. So you can just use the same card on both devices, just move it over. Okay, so front end wise, I'm gonna talk about emulation station because I haven't found a reliable way to back up Digisho or other front ends. But if you have emulation station, then we can do that. When you first set it up, it would ask you to put where you wanna save your data. And it asks you to create an ES-D folder somewhere. Now, if you initially chose your SD card, then perfect. It's all on your SD card and we can move it over. But if you chose on your internal storage to put that ESD folder, then all you have to do is copy that folder using Solid Explorer and copy it to your SD card. With ESDE on your SD card, you can move that SD card across any Android device and it'll have your ESD data and everything right on it. So let's say you did that. You put ESD on an SD card, you moved it over to your new device, you booted up Emulation Station, and it was like, hey, this is a new setup. All you have to do is choose where that ESD folder is on your SD card. And when you go through setup and you're done, it should import everything as it was on your old device. So you're set up. Now on the ROM side, it's the exact same thing. If you had your ROMs folder on your internal storage, move it to an SD card, move it over to the new device and then choose where you want to keep it. It really depends. If you're going to use two devices and you want to move things back and forth, then use one SD card, put emulation station folder on the SD card, put the ROMs folder on there. And that way, all you have to do is install emulation station on both devices, point it to those directories and you're done. And it's all during setup. It's the first screens that you get that all you have to do is say, hey, this is where my stuff is. Okay, let's move over to emulators now. And we're going to start with RetroArch. For RetroArch on Android, all of the files are stored in the internal storage RetroArch folder. And you want to back up a few folders or just back up the entire RetroArch folder if it's easier for you. Now cheats is useful, of course, because if you added any custom cheats, then you want to bring them over. Otherwise, if you were just using the built-in cheat downloader for RetroArch, you don't have to really bring this over and you can just set that up on the new device. Config has any custom core configurations you've done. So maybe you set color correction to on in MGBA, or maybe you made some changes to resolutions in the N64 cores, things like that. Those would all be in here. On top of that, there's also a remaps folder for any button remaps that you've done for any different cores. Now, the problem with that is that one device likely has different inputs than the other device. So if you bring over any remaps and button configurations and things like that, it's most likely not going to work on your new device and it's gonna give you a bit of a headache. So I would suggest not bringing over any remaps for buttons. Then we have saves and that's obvious. That's where all your saves live. 
and states. Another one that's pretty obvious, that's where all of your save states are. So for me, I would personally back up the entire RetroArch folder just in case. But if you want to be specific about it, the cheats folder, the config folder, saves and states are good. Now to restore on a new device, you would install RetroArch as normal using the 64-bit option on their website and go through the normal setup following one of my setup guides that I'll have in the description. Then you can copy over your cheats, config, saves, and states folders after from your backup when you're all set and you should be good to go. Okay, let's move on to DuckStation now and it is actually very easy with DuckStation. There is a built-in import and export function. So click the three lines, transfer data, click export. Then you just wanna choose your either SD cards download folder or anywhere else and create a folder, just call it DuckStation. Then use that folder. You're gonna see a pop-up asking, what do you wanna export? And we wanna export everything. So select all and then export. Now to restore, install DuckStation on your new device and it's through the Play Store, so it's easy. You can skip through all of the setup prompts, head back to transfer data, import, select the folder that we created on your SD card and import. It's gonna ask you what to import and you can select what you want or import everything. But again, this isn't going to restore controller mappings or your PS1 game directory. You have to set that up again, but it's gonna restore a lot. Your BIOS files, your save files, your save states, things like that. So it does help quite a bit. Next, we have Dolphin. And Dolphin, again, actually has a built-in import and export function because like DuckStation, all of their stuff is saved behind the Android data partition that you can't access on a lot of different devices. So to make it easy, open Dolphin, go to the settings cog, config, user data, export user data, and choose your downloads folder on your SD card or wherever else. And it's gonna export into a dolphin-mu.zip file. This literally exports everything, saves, configs, all of it, it's great. So to restore, it's the same steps. Install Dolphin from the Play Store on your next device, head to settings, config, user data, import user data, and select the zip file that you exported. PPSSPP is next. When you first set up PPSSPP, as long as you followed my guide or anybody that's worth their salt, you would have created a PPSSPP folder on your internal storage, and that has all of your PSP files. Sometimes I call it PPSSPP, sometimes I call it PSP. It's a variation. Either way, as long as you created a folder and you stored all of your files inside of it, that is what we need. So once again, the easy way for this is just to back up that entire folder and move it onto your SD card. Everything that we need is in there, but we can get specific about it so you know what each folder does. Now, cheats is self-explanatory. Once again, if you added cheats, you want to bring cheats over. PPSSPP underscore state is save states. That's great to keep. Save data is actual saves. So we want that, of course. And you might have textures if you did any HD texture packs. So you would bring that over too. Now to restore on your next device, install PPSSPP from the Google Play Store. Set it up following one of my guides, which really is just setting up a folder and creating a folder called PPSSPP and selecting that. And then once that's all done, you can move over your folders from your backup. So the cheats folder, the state, save data and textures. Okay, let's do Drastic now. And when you first install Drastic, there's a warning that pops up that tells you that their data is saved by default behind Android's data partition. And if you've been paying attention during this video, that's not a good thing. However, Drastic lets you change that. Now, it doesn't matter if you didn't do this already, we can do it now. So head to Options, General, System Directory, and change it to Scoped Storage Folder. Create a folder called Drastic on your internal storage and select it. Restart Drastic and then click OK. It's gonna copy all of your files and folders over from behind Android's data partition to the internal storage. And you can say yes to deleting the source files if you want. Now, if we head to Solid Explorer and open up the Drastic folder on the internal storage, you'll see all of your folders are here. So it's pretty simple, but to restore on a new device, install Drastic from the Google Play Store, 
And we're gonna follow the exact same steps. So we're gonna head to Options, General, System Directory, change it to Scoped Storage Folder, create a folder called Drastic on your internal storage and select it. Go ahead and restart, click OK, delete the source files, and then you can exit out of Drastic, go and grab your backed up folder, and then copy over any specific folders inside that you need. So cheats, saves, things like that. You can just copy them over. Okay, so let's do Melon DS now and open it and head to the three buttons top right, Settings, Save Files, and the default is that it saves in your ROM directory. Now, if you've been using Melon DS like this, all of your saves are in your ROM folder. Wherever your Nintendo DS ROMs are, that's where your saves are. So you can just manually go and grab them. Saves are unfortunately all you can back up in Melon DS right now. But to restore saves, install Melon DS, and then I would suggest turning that option off. Select Save File Directory and create a Melon DS folder on your internal storage. Then use this folder. Now all of your saves will be in that Melon DS folder going forward. That also means that all of those saves that you backed up could just be pasted right in there and off you go. Okay, let's do Redream now. And unfortunately, Redream's save files are behind Android's data partition and it is in the io.recompile.redream folder, files and saves. But again, depending on your device, you might not be able to access this at all. But if you do have access to them, you could copy the saves folder and then restore it on another device as long as that new device has access to it too. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do here for redream. It just doesn't have the option for saves to be put anywhere else. And that's why I suggest that you use Flycast and it is a standalone Dreamcast emulator for Android. Flycast actually has an import and export function. So you can open Flycast, go to settings, top right, export, create a folder in your downloads folder called Flycast Backup, and then use that folder. And then to restore, you would just import your data after installing Flycast and select that backed up folder again. Aether SX2 and Nether SX2 are very easy as well. Like Dolphin and DuckStation, they have a transfer data option. So you would click the three lines, transfer data, export, choose your downloads folder, and create a folder called PS2 Backup or Nether SX2 Backup, whatever you want, and use that folder. Like DuckStation, you're going to see a pop-up asking what do you want to export, and you want all of it, so select it all and export. To restore that data, install Nether SX2, you can skip through the setup prompts, head back to Transfer Data, Import, select the folder that we created, and Import. And it's going to ask you what do you want to import, select what you want to do, but again, this isn't going to restore controller mappings or your PS2 ROM directory and other things. So it's mostly going to restore saves and BIOS files, game settings, save states, and things like that. Lime 3DS and Citra and all of those are next. It doesn't matter which 3DS emulator, they are all running off of Citra, so it's all the same. When you set up the 3DS emulator, it asks you to create a folder somewhere to put all of your data. And if you followed one of my guides, you know that I would have created a folder called Lime3DS on the internal storage. Inside of that is a few folders that you want to back up, but I would suggest just backing up the entire folder. The folders inside that you want is the Cheats folder, obviously. The Load Textures folder is useful if you installed HD Textures. Lastly, there is the SDMC, Nintendo 3DS, a lot of zeros, a lot of zeros, and these folders here, because this is where your save data is. But again, honestly, just back up your entire Lime 3DS folder, and now you know where the specific folders are. To restore this data, install Lime 3DS once again on the new device, create a Lime 3DS folder once again when it asks you where you want to store your data, and use it. Go through the setup as usual, and then you can move back your folders into that Lime 3DS folder. Once again, you have to redo the controller mappings and certain other little settings, but for the most part, your saves, cheats, and all of that will be there. M64 Plus FZ is up next. And you guessed it, this one actually has an import and export feature too. 
So we can head to the three lines, tools, import export data, export game data, and then you want to create a folder called M64 Plus. And you can put this on your SD card or downloads folder and use this folder. You can also do cheats and profiles as well. To restore this data, install M64 Plus FZ, head to the three lines, tools, import export data, and then import the game data folder that is in the folder that we just backed up. M64 Plus will restore your saves, configs, and all of that, but a lot of the other settings for the emulator won't be set up. A nice hidden tip for those that want to use sync thing for M64 Plus FZ, you actually have an option to change the game data storage location from internal to external. So if you head to settings, data, and then you set your external game data location, you can create an M64 Plus folder on your internal storage. Then use that folder and going forward, saves will be in there and you can sync that across devices. But keep in mind that this doesn't copy over your existing saves if you've been using M64 Plus FZ already. So only do this if you're setting it up for the first time. For Vita 3K, during setup, you got a choice of choosing where you wanted to store Vita 3K's files. I'm hoping that you chose this yourself because otherwise your data is locked behind Android's data storage. But if you choose a location on your internal storage and call it Vita 3K, all of your files will be available in there. And so for Vita 3K, if you head inside of the UX0, user, 00, save data folder, all of your saves are in there. And so you can back those up and then restore them on the new device. To restore it, it's the same steps. You would install Vita 3K, choose a folder, and you wanna make a folder called Vita 3K on the new device. And then you can copy those saves back to the new device. Now we have CMU, and CMU doesn't have any built-in transferring right now. And once again, you're gonna be limited by Android's data storage. But for those that have access to it, you can go to Android data, info.cmu.cmu, files, MLC01, user, and save folder. And you can see your saves are in there. Back the folder up if your device allows it and restore it if your device allows it. Okay, Nintendo Switch is last and it doesn't matter which Switch emulator because they all use the same thing. They're all running off of Yuzu. But guess what has an import and export function? Head to settings, manage data, and if you select export user data, then your downloads folder, it's gonna export everything. To restore, install the Switch emulator on your new device, head to settings, manage data, and import user data, and then select that zip file that we exported. There are many ways to skin a cat. This is the easiest that I found for most people to do this. I don't do a lot of this because I use sync thing and there's a lot of different ways that I can do that compared to what I talked about today. But if you are just looking for very simple ways to get data from one thing to another and you want to use built-in functions or the simplest way possible, this is how I found it. Make sure that you check the pinned comment just in case I come across anything else that I want to share. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about retro handhelds. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.